Welcome back to these lectures on Western Civilization, Part 1. Uh, in our last lecture, we discussed uh, human language uh, briefly, uh, the emergence of which, occur, of course, occurs in prehistory. Uh, today's lecture is also going to deal with something that occurs in prehistory, and that's the, uh, the first uh, inklings of uh, religion or of man thinking about uh, life after death. Uh, the theme here that you should keep in mind as we discuss these things is the, the sequence of life, death, and then rebirth. This must have been a powerful uh, sequence to watch in nature. Uh, let's face it, the sun rises in the east every day, uh, it sets in the west, and then it disappears, but yet it returns the next morning. Again, life, and then the, uh, uh, the sun dropping, uh, its death, and then its rebirth the next morning. Same with the moon. The moon waxes and, as it waxes and wanes, does it not? Uh, appearing and then disappearing and then coming back. Uh, think, about the, uh, think about the forest in the fall, when the leaves fall. And then think about the forest in the spring when they return life, death, and rebirth. Uh, this sequence uh, may be part of these first ideals that early man has about uh, perhaps his own uh, life after death. We don't know these things. We have to speculate about them, and we have some evidence. Um, I want to call this uh, lecture opaque documents. Opaque means something that's murky that you can't see through. So this is a metaphor for uh, human artifacts that we find, yet their meaning is not quite clear. Uh, they're not a document in the sense that a historian goes through the archives and looks at written documents. Again, it's a metaphor for, uh, say, a burial, human bones, figurines, uh, weapons or tools, uh, things like this. Opaque documents, they're unclear, uh, yet we speculate about their meaning as humans are wont to do. Uh, the first one I'm going to mention here are burials. It's very interesting that somewhere in the neighborhood of a round figure of 50,000 years ago, uh, man began to bury his dead. Prior to this, the dead had been left on the trail as these Paleolithic groups go on about their business trying to find something to eat. Yet, for some reason, uh, early man began to bury the dead about around 50,000 years ago. And again, that's a general round, rounded off figure. Why? Why did they begin to bury the dead? Is there some sense of uh, uh, sacredness for, for, the, uh, for the dead body? Is there some sense that uh, the dead need a place to rest? Uh, we're not sure. Yet we find corpses uh, high up in the mountains uh, preserved and uh, in the arid regions of North Africa, we find corpses uh, that have red ochre. Uh, it's a, ochre is a mineral, it's like Georgia red clay. Uh, we have this red ochre smeared over their bodies. Uh, why? Is it because red uh, corresponds with the color of blood and it is associated with life? Uh, we don't know. It's an opaque document. It's not clear. Uh, clearly, the people who practice this did have a meaning for it. That's what we're groping to find. Of course, uh, we find corpses as well with um, tools and sometimes with weapons. Uh, why? Is there an anticipation that the dead will return and that upon returning they will need these tools or weapons to survive in the afterlife? Corpses have been found bound, hands and feet bound, as if uh, tied, as if a prisoner perhaps. We, we don't know the meaning of this. Uh, were they bound because perhaps they were dangerous here in life? And there's an anticipation that they may, may continue to be dangerous in the afterlife? Again, we're not sure. Uh, this is where we have to speculate and use our imagination. Other corpses have been found in fetal positions. Uh, is this symbolic of birth? Um, 
the infant in a fetal position and now the corpse in a fetal position. Uh, again, we're not sure. Uh, quite often corpses are found uh, facing east. Uh, of course, the sun rises in the east. Is there some connection here uh, between the movement of the heavenly bodies and the uh, anticipation of an afterlife? I should mention the, uh, the terracotta army discovered in western China. Uh, I believe a, a Chinese farmer was attempting to dig a well and he broke into this vast chamber underground where there are thousands of terracotta soldiers uh, arrayed uh, over a very large area. Um, you can Google this or we'll have images of it for you. Uh, these soldiers are not cookie cutter soldiers either. They're uh, individualistic. They have their, their, each face is different. Um, there are chariots and horses and detailed uh, weaponry. And uh, it's a fantastic sight. Uh, the first time I saw it, I was uh, in awe. And then it occurs to you as an historian, why? Why was such expense and time and labor put into carving and then painting these terracotta soldiers and their, all the accoutrement of, uh, of warfare? Uh, the chariots and the horses and on and on and on. Um, presumably this was to accompany the Chinese emperor uh, into the afterlife. It'd be very difficult to imagine uh, their purpose otherwise. Another opaque document that all of you have seen at some time or another are the cave paintings, um, Altamira and other places in Europe. Uh, we find these spectacular cave paintings deep in the recesses of these caves where it's uh, quite dark. If you've ever been caving and you turn out your, the lamp, you know just how dark it is. It's so dark that it's disorienting. Yet these paintings are deep in the uh, recesses of these caves and quite often they're not at eye level. They're much higher. Uh, up on the ceiling, so to speak, or high up on the walls of the cave. And quite often they're not small, they're large murals. And we see in these paintings, um, rarely do we see humans, mostly we see animals. Um, there's speculation as to the meaning of this. Uh, did early man, did Paleolithic man, was he seeking to pay homage to the animals? the animals that he killed and uh, prepared for dinner? Uh, is this a way of assuring the animal's return? Uh, we don't know. Uh, were, the, were the paintings a place where the young, young men might have been initiated into the, the rituals of the hunt? Again, we don't know. Uh, was it purely an, an, an aesthetic uh, sense of these Paleolithic people to express themselves? through painting, just as we do today. Uh, it's not clear. It's not clear. Did they have religious implications? Do, was there an idea here of, of, uh, of, the, of the return of the prey um, to, to sustain our small group of people? And by paying homage to the animal in art, uh, are we anticipating the return of the dead? Life, death, rebirth. Uh, we see figures, uh, fertility figures sometimes in, in burials. Uh, small fertility figures, women with exa exaggerated uh, secondary sexual characteristics that hint at rebirth. Um, these are all speculations. Uh, it's interesting to think about it's, uh, it is prehistory. There's no explicit evidence. There's simply human artifacts that we have to, uh, we have to grapple with. We have to, uh, uh, you know how we are with our imaginations and our curiosity. We can't leave anything alone, so there's endless speculation as to the meaning of these things. I'll close here with um, another example, perhaps, of life, death, and rebirth. And that is the serpent. Uh, the serpent must have been fascinating for Paleolithic man. It has no obvious means of locomotion to begin with. But more to our point um, is the shedding of the skin. 
you can imagine the Paleolithic man in his journeys coming across the shedded skin of a serpent or snake. Does this hint at the discarding of one life and the beginning of another? Uh, again, going back to this theme of life, death, and rebirth, we see it in nature, we see it in the heavenly bodies, we see it uh, perhaps here even with something as low as a snake. So I'm going to close here this discussion of opaque documents. I hope it will uh, uh, get your imagination working a bit to try to, to try to figure out exactly the meaning of these, these artifacts left by mankind deep in prehistory. Thank you. Thank you.